We are now live for the official One Revolution post-event interviews. Joining us shortly will be some of our martial arts heroes directly after the performances inside the One Circle. The timing for these athlete interviews are up on your screen and we hope you can join us. To ask questions, please raise your hands on Zoom and when we call out your name in publication, you may then proceed to ask your questions. Alternatively, you can also type in your questions in the Zoom Q&A chat box and I can then read them out to the athletes. Our first athlete of the day is the rising star, James Yang. James, congratulations on your win, man. How are you feeling right now? Thank you, man. I feel good. I feel fresh. Didn't get any too, no injuries. So yeah, man, feel good. Talk us through the fight. Did it go according to plan? More or less, yeah. I mean, I, you know, I knew we were going to have a big advantage on the ground, um, but I wanted to showcase more of my striking. It just happened to go to the ground because he was going kind of wild. So I just shot underneath and listened to DJ and, yeah, worked my ground game. James, we got some questions out here from the media. This first one is from Fight Game Asia. And the question is this. You look like a hot knife through butter. Do you expect it? Did you expect it to be that easy? I mean, it's what I visualized, but you never know. You know, going into fights, anything can happen. Um, but, I mean, my, I, I give it all to my teammates, you know, back home. AMT Kickboxing and uh, our brothers from C3, they all really helped me prepare for this fight. So, I mean, that's, that's what it came down to, the preparation. We've seen you inside one championship for a while now, following DJ around. You've been a part of some of DJ's cornering as well. What's it like to finally get into the one championship circle? Yeah, I guess it feels great. I mean, don't get me wrong. It feels great, you know, but just what I've been visualizing for a long time and for it to work out the way that I, I envisioned it is pretty surreal, you know, like, yeah, I guess just never give up on your dreams because, I mean, I know it's kind of cliche, corny and trite, whatever you want to say, but I mean, you put the work in and it really comes true. So I'll keep going. I'll keep, I'll keep going. I'll go back to the gym and keep getting better and work hard and keep improving my skill sets. James, we got this next question now from Raj Sakar. Raj, please go ahead with your question. Hello, James. First of all, congratulations on your successful pro debut. It was an easy win. And we actually spoke a few days back and you seemed really confident about getting the win. Also, you mentioned about having pizzas with Demetrius Johnson after the win. So I'm just curious, did he, what did Demetrius Johnson say to you after the fight? And did you actually have pizzas with him? Yeah, he's, he's proud of me, you know. We, we just had some uh, some burgers, uh, some fries, and, and uh, a little dessert. So I feel a little woozy in my belly, to be honest, but it was nice just hanging out. We're just watching, we're just in the room watching fights right now and just, just kind of hanging out. Also, what was your game plan coming into the fight? I mean, when the doors were locked in and Rosario came forward, how did you decode him as a fighter? I know you had studied him pre-fight, but was it really different from what you saw inside the cage? I mean, what kind of fighter was he inside the cage, actually? Yeah, I mean, the biggest thing with whoever you fight is all about adapting. You know, yeah. uh, you know, if you try to think about too much of what that guy's going to do, or you look to me, watch too much video of him, what they do, and then and then you come into the ring and he does something completely different that can really throw you into a loop. So I never, you know, try to focus too much on that. I just knew that I was going to have an advantage on the ground game. But yeah, overall, I think the strikes is exactly what I thought he was going to throw, big looping hooks and big left kicks. Uh, yeah, I just, I just had to adapt to it. And, um, and yeah, it, it, went, it went well for me. Also, my final question is that I know you're willing to fight anyone one championship offer, but now you've actually won your debut via stoppage and that's a massive step up for you, actually. So if I just ask you to pick one of the many names in the division, who would be? Just one name. I don't know. There's no anybody. You know, for me, I'm here for the belt, you know, and, I, and that's all I'm here for. You know, now that I'm in here, that's what I'm here for. So whoever gets me to that point, just keep doing it. You know, just keep knocking them down. Thank you so much. That's all for me. Congratulations once again. Thank you. James, one big featherweight bout that happened tonight was the former champ Martin Nguyen versus Kim J. Won. Give us your thoughts on that one. Yeah, it was a tough fight, man. Martin's, uh, we've been hanging out with Martin long throughout the fight week, you know, but it was, you know, great job by Kim. That was a crazy exchange. Either either guy could have got clipped in there, you know. It's just that uh, Kim J. Won is a little, a little shorter, tighter with his right hook. Um, yeah, yeah. It was a good fight, though. I was excited to see it. And yeah, Martin will, Martin will, Martin will bounce back, though. I'm sure he will. This next question, James, is from Luis Morales of Phil Star. The question was grappling always part of the game plan? 
What was the question? Sorry. This question from Luis Morales of Philstar. And the question was, was grappling always part of the game plan? I mean, it's mixed martial arts, man. You have to blend it all together. I mean, you got to put it together seamlessly. That's, that's the beauty of mixed martial arts. You can't be one dimensional. And if you are one dimensional, then you got to go search out the rest of your game because that's, that's when, that's when I take you to the next, that's what's going to elevate you to the, to the top. You have to be well-rounded. If not, then you're lacking in your own martial arts development. That's why, that's why I think about that. We have a question here now from Dylan Bowker of my MMA news. Dylan, please go ahead. Hey there, James. I appreciate you making some time. Hey Dylan. Thanks for having me. I'm just kind of curious because as much as this is a tremendous individual moment and accomplishment, like I love the lineage dynamics in martial arts, like the Matt Hume, you know, DJ lineage, Demetrius in your corner there. Like as much as it's a tremendous individual accomplishment, how cool is it to, I guess, add another tendril to that martial arts lineage of Matt Hume and DJ there? Yeah, it's good for the MMA uh, mythical lore, MMA lore. <laughs> yeah. It's fun for everybody. But how did you feel out there getting in the circle? I mean, it seemed like the, you know, consummate performance one could hope for in their debut. Like, what's your overall assessment of the effort there? Yeah, I, I mean, I feel good. I mean, I, there's things I can work on to improve, you know, tonight I'm going to enjoy what I did. But, you know, I'm, 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 I'm excited to get back to the gym and just improve and get better. So that's my yeah, mind. Well, I really, yeah, no, I appreciate the insights, man. And yeah, great win. Thanks for the time. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. James, looking at the bout, I don't know if you've had any chance to look over it yet, but in the first round, it seemed that you had difficulty finishing the rear naked choke. Did you think it was really close when you locked that in? Yeah, he was gurgling, man. I had, I, was, I thought he was going to go to sleep, but dude, the guy has like some gills hidden away in his neck or something. Uh, he's a tough dude, man. And so, yeah, I got to go back and, I, you know, the biggest thing was that I was trying to go over the ground, the side where the, where the ground is, you know, so gravity's working on the choke, but he's good job rolling back to the other side. So that's why he's kind of getting some space there. But yeah, it's something I got, I'll work on when I go back to the gym for sure. But you've been talking not, about, sorry, please go ahead. No, I'll just say shout out to Roel, man. He's a tough dude, man. He's been working a lot on his grappling. So, you know, I, I really thought he was going to, you know, he was gargling pretty hard. So I thought he was going to go out, but he, he gutted it out, man. He's a tough dude. He didn't, he didn't want to lose. So, you know, all props to him. And you've been talking about making adjustments. It seemed that in the second round, you went to the ground control to finish off the ground and pound. Was that something that your cornerman, DJ, talked to you about? Well, I just, just what he saw was going on. You know, he just told me to, you know, just let rain it down on him and that was it. You know, it's just not necessarily what he was saying in between the rounds, but just what he saw during the round. He, I can hear him from the corner. And I was very attentive to him, you know, so I, I can hear everything and I was relaxed so I could see my shots. Um, and that was, that, that was the biggest thing. So he definitely, definitely uh, was a great asset, you know, having him in my corner. It's always an honor to have him there, so. What was the whole process like flying into Singapore with the quarantine and did that affect your performance at all? Did you feel at any point during fight week that you weren't feeling that great? No, not at all, man. I, I can be with a, a ton of people. Or I can be by myself. It's all the same for me. It's just, it's all in the mind, you know? So I, I'm, I'm solid there. I'm talking about having lineages and folklore and of MMA, Matt Hume, DJ, how big, of a help are they to you? Tremendous, man. I mean, just to be, you know, in, a, in conversation with those two legends, man, it's, it's unbelievable. So, you know, something that I got to pinch myself because it's a little surreal, but, you know, over the last, you know, seven, six, seven years, you know, we've really developed like a, a strong brotherhood, a family and yeah, man, it just all comes down to chemistry and we have that. So that's, that's, that's why, but, you know, I'm very, I'm eternally grateful for them and everyone else at AMC Kick Boston Print Creation that you don't know about, you know, there are no names, they're all great guys too. They're all family too. So, you know, I, I wouldn't be here without them. I got to ask you about the two massive bouts that your teammates are about to have in the near future. DJ versus Raw Tag. That one's going to be crazy. Tell us your thoughts about that one. I can't wait for that fight. It's going to be, uh, you know, it's going to be historic, first of all, first and foremost. But it's going to be super exciting for the fans too. Any, any, any fighter that's, that loves combat sports is going to be jumping out of their chairs when they see this thing, man. So, you know, I, of course, I'm going to be a little biased. And I think DJ is going to going to win this. But, I mean, you know, Rod Tang in the first round is so going to be so dangerous. It's just that his striking style to the guys he competes against, are just they just fight differently. You know, they don't they don't use the footwork as much. They like to stand in the pocket and trade. And I think DJ is really good at sniping and moving, Good, really good footwork. And then when it comes to the second round, 
I mean, you know, Rod can be training ground game right now, but I don't think it's in a it's not enough for the years that DJ has on him. You know, it's just it's gonna be too much. And if he sweeps DJ to the ground, that's just putting him into another world where he's gonna be, you know, triangles, arm bar, guillotine. It's gonna be it's gonna be dangerous for him. So money's on DJ. Money's on DJ. Not biasedly, not biasedly. <laughs> not even a little. <laughs> we got a question now from Matthew Lee of Tiebreaker Times. The question is this, James, what can you say about the hard show by Rowell during the match? Was he tougher than you expected? No, I thought he was, I thought he's a really game fighter. I mean, it's probably the highest level of competition that I've had in, in MMA so far. You know, he has like nine pro fights or something. So this might've been his 10th. So yeah, man, I mean, he was a tough dude, man. I knew he was going to come out swinging hard. And he's like any, any fight I go into, the guy's trying to take my head off, you know? So it, it ain't nothing like I wasn't unprepared for that. So it's exactly how I visualized it was going to go down. I have really, I got good eyesight and I control the distance well. So it didn't, you know, everything kind of came at slow motion when I go in the ring. It just like, and I'm just moving out of the way and then just trying to minimize the wildness. And then when I saw the opportunity to shoot underneath and, and take his hips out, I went for it and then just controlled him and then pounded him out and it all, it all worked out. So yeah, he's a tough dude. I, I'm happy to, to have that competition with him for sure. Thank you for that, James. We have a question now from Stephen Irvine of MMA Radio. Stephen, please proceed. Stephen, can you hear us? We're going to move on to the next question now. This one's from Randolph Leong, son of Spin Philippines. The question is, were you tired after being so active in round one? No, not not really. I, I mean, it wasn't super high paced uh, round. And I was, you know, that, that when you choke, you know, uh, you, you're choking somebody, you're not, it's not muscle fatigue. You just have to relax and just sink it with your bones and just kind of sit and squeeze. So yeah, I wasn't too fatigued from that. <clears throat> so yeah, I was all right. But you know, that's being said, I can always improve my cardio. And, you know, I always look to improve that. We're gonna go back to Stephen Irvine now of MMA Radio. Stephen, please proceed. James Young, first of all, it's uh, Steve at MMA Radio. Congratulations on such a successful debut. It was a very dominant win. How are your feelings looking ahead? So, any featherweight fighters that excite you and that you perhaps want to fight at some time soon? I'll, I guess all of them eventually. I mean, whoever, the road to the belt, whoever I have to go through to get there, then that's 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 all excites me you know whatever it doesn't matter who it is there's no face to it there's no individual that i have like animosity towards like I, you know i don't care i know we're all in this game to support our family follow our dreams and it's just how the game goes you know um but yeah that's just how it is and i have no i have nothing against any of them it's just how it is perfect thank you very much good luck thank you James, congratulations, congratulations again on your victory. So happy for you, man. I'm sure we're going to see you again really soon. Thank you so much, brother. You take care of yourself, right? You be healthy, and uh, yeah, I'll talk to you soon. Thank you, my man. Appreciate it. Bye, guys. That was